I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to work with specific heat capacity. So I'm going to show you two examples here. So the first one, we're going to have some T. So we have 0.2 liters of T, which is initially at 95 degrees Celsius, and that's poured into a cup. Now it's 150 grams, and it's made of glass, and it's initially at 25 degrees Celsius. Now the question is, what will be the equilibrium temperature? That's because the hot T will cool off, the, cool, the relatively cool cup will heat up, and so they will reach some sort of equilibrium. We're going to assume there's no heat loss to the surroundings. Now we're given the specific heat capacity of the T, and if you notice, this actually matches the heat capacity of water, and that makes sense because T is mostly water. But we also have the specific heat capacity of glass, and we're given that. Now notice though, they give it to you in, uh, per Celsius, and that's actually nice because then we can work with Celsius directly. You could have also converted this to Kelvin and then done it. That's actually also the same. It turns out because um, you're going to be looking at ratios and then the units will cancel out, so it won't matter. But in any case, as long as you're within Celsius or, K or Kelvin, this will be fine. So let's maybe try to draw what's going on here. Uh, now you can tell I'm not an artist, but I'll try. So I have a container of tea, so maybe that goes sort of like this. Now the tea is relatively hot, so maybe I'll draw it with sort of some red here. That'll be my T. Now with this actual T here, this is something that's relatively hot. And that's going to be poured into some sort of cup. So maybe I need a cup here, so I'll draw that. Let's see what a tea cup has like a little handle here. That's my cup. And the cup is relatively cool. Right? It's only at 25 degrees Celsius. So what's really going on then? Well, what I can take a look at now is, you know, I have some different things with the T here. I have the mass of the T. I have the mass of the cup. Or at least I can figure those out. I have a specific heat capacity of the T and a specific heat capacity of the cup as well. So I think I'm in business here. I think I have what I need. So how do I actually deal with this? Well, do you remember that I showed you this equation? So when you're dealing with things with specific heat capacity, the key is to look at who loses energy and who gains energy. In other words, Q lost equals Q gained. This is the key to solving this. So we're going to look at this. So who loses energy and who gains energy? Well, when they reach equilibrium, it will probably be somewhere between 95 and 25. The question is how much? You know, is it closer to 95? Is it closer to 25? Don't just guess. You can figure this out. So we're going to separate. We're going to consider so who loses energy and who gains it. Now, the hot water will become cooler. So that's clearly the one that loses. Okay, so I'm going to say that. So instead of Q lost equals Q gained, I'm going to write as Q. I hope you're okay with me writing T instead of TEA. So QT. And that's going to be Q gained. Then it's going to be the cup. Or C. Maybe I'll just write down with C. C for cup. So this is the T, and this is for the cup. Actually, maybe I will leave it. I'll leave it as T and cup. So the T loses energy. The cup gains energy. So this is how I'm going to set it up. Then all I have to do is actually write an equation for it. So maybe I'll do this over here on the left. So I'll, I'll try that. I'll start. So for Q of the T, now we have to remember what equation we have. We have an equation that governs a specific heat capacity. It goes Q equals MC delta T, where M is the mass, C is a specific heat capacity, and delta T is the change in temperature. So I need to write one of these terms for the T and one of these for the cup. So I'm going to just start writing. So Q of the T equals Q of the cup, which in this case then is going to be M. Now I'm going to be really lazy. Instead of saying TEA, I'm going to say MT, CT, delta T of the T here. That gets a little bit confusing. Um, then MC, specific heat capacity of the cup, times the change in temperature of the cup. All right. Do I know the mass of the T? Well, I know it's in liters, but it turns out if you want to find the mass of the T, uh, one liter is one kilogram, so 0.2 liters is 0 0.2 kilograms. That's actually kind of nice. And the mass of the cup, I know that it's 150 grams, which in kilograms is 0 0.150, because you move the decimal three over. So there we go. Now I'm in business. I'm ready to go. Now what I just need to do is start solving.
So let's actually just start figuring everything else out here. Oh, um, maybe I should go one step further actually. So I'll say M T C T and this Delta T I'm actually going to sort of break into that Delta T here and start to deal with it. So this goes from a, a hot temperature to a cold temperature. So the hot temperature that'll be T of the T in other words, the original temperature of the T minus the temperature of equilibrium. This is what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the equilibrium temperature. That's the whole goal. We want to find the equilibrium temperature. So that would be this equals. Well, I got to figure out what this is and this is. And this change in temperature is going to be, uh, keep in mind, this is the cold one. So the cold one gains energy. And because of that, then I can say then that the equilibrium temperature will be first because that'll be hotter. It's a larger value minus a smaller value. So there we go. I just got to now fill in all the details that I know. So I know the mass of the T is 0.2 kilograms. So I'll put that in. So 0.2. The specific heat capacity of the T, that is 4196. Uh, sorry, 4186. Then I have Temperature of the T, well, that's 95 minus what I'm looking for. This is what I don't know. I'm trying to find this T equilibrium. Equals, what's the mass of the cup? That's 0 0.15. And the specific heat capacity of the cup is 840. T equilibrium, which I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find. Minus the temperature of the cup. So that is 25. There we go, now it's just a matter of solving this. Now this looks a little bit ugly, but you can totally do it. Um, I'm gonna use a little online uh, calculator just because I need to use something here. Um, I'm gonna make it maybe a little bit smaller just so I have a chance here of working with it. Put it off to the side. So I'm gonna try to figure out then what do I do here. So I have 0 0.2 times 4186. So I'm gonna say that, so 0 0.2 times 4186. That gives me this number here, 837.2. Now what I'm going to need to do, that's going to be, uh, it's going to be this number right here times 95. So this times 95. So that gives me this number, 79534. All right, so I'm going to put that down, 79534. Now that's this times this times this. But I also got to do this times this times this. So I got 0 0.2 times 4186. This is again just a little bit tedious, but that's okay. We can just, oh, I think I can just cheat and go back to my last thing. So that was this one right here that I'd done. That's 837.2. So that's minus 837.2 times the temperature that I'm looking for. That equals, and I'm going to do the same sort of treatment over here, 0.15 times 840. This is a bit tedious though. It's kind of annoying, but oh well, we can do it. So 0.15 times 840, that gives me this number, 126. So that's going to be 126 times my temperature I want. So 126 times T equilibrium. But I can't forget to do this times this times this as well. So that's why I got to go back here and multiply this answer times uh, 25. That gets me 3150, so it'll be minus 3150. Now just, if you're not sure what I did, just take your time right here, but this should work. Now I'm trying to get my equilibrium temperatures all on one side, so I'm gonna move this one to the right. Okay, so if I move this one over here to the right, I'm gonna add it. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna be a little bit sneaky, I'm also gonna move this minus one over to the left. So I'm gonna move everything over, sort of one over here, one over here. That's just because I want all my numbers on one side and I want all the things with T equilibrium on one side. So I'm gonna say 126 plus 837, that's gonna tell me what's on the right side of the equation. Because I'm only gonna have, I'm gonna say 126 T equilibrium. Actually, if you're not sure, I'll just write it all out. So 126 T equilibrium plus 837.5 T equilibrium. And that's going to be the same thing as, um, now on the left side, I'm going to have 79534 plus 3150, because that'll move over, and that'll become a plus. There we go. Now this is looking a little bit annoying. I completely agree there. 
but um, I think we can still do it. We can still figure it out. So if I look at all this, then what I'm going to do is um, I probably need some more space. Um, I'll just go to the next page. I'll add an extra page here. So I'll just add these numbers. So 79534 plus 3150. So I'll do those. I'll actually add a new page. I'll do it on my calculator then. So it was uh, 79, oops, so 79534 plus, uh, what was it, 3150. And that gives me 82684. So that's going to go on the left side here. 8268. Uh, that's what's on the left side here. On the right side, I have 126 times T equilibrium plus 837.5. So I'm going to do those as well. So I have to figure those out as well. So here we go. I have 126 plus 837.5. And I get 963.5. Uh, so away I go. Uh, hold on a second. It was 0.2, wasn't it? I just uh, noticed here. I have a mistake. Can you see my little mistake? I, it's a very, very minor mistake. It wasn't 0.5. It's supposed to be 837.2. I just noticed something was weird. There we go. Whew. So, away I go. I can just solve this, and I'll just do it again. So it's 126 plus 837.2. And then I get 963.2 times t equilibrium. So 963, what was it again? 963.2. So I'll go over here and say equals 963.2 times t equilibrium. Now this is really quite long, but we're almost done. How do I get t equilibrium by itself? I gotta take this number and divide by this. So that's what I'm gonna do finally. I just divide those two. So maybe I'll move my calculator out of the way. So I'm going to say 82684 divided by 963.2. Phew! So I get 85.8. 85.8. That's the number I get here. So T equilibrium equals 85.8. Now I got to think about how many significant figures can I use. Um, oh, this probably should have been a 0 0.20. I think I should have made that 0 0.20. In any case, I get 85.8, which is pretty much 86 degrees Celsius. So there we go. I have this. Phew. So a little bit long, a little bit gross, but we can totally do it. We can actually totally figure out um, what the equilibrium temperature is. And do you notice, by the way, the temperature of 86 is actually quite close to the 95. Do you notice it started off as 95 degrees for the water? And the cup was at 25. And do you notice the equilibrium temperature is very close to this one? Why is that? Because it has a really high heat capacity. And that just means it takes a lot of energy to change its temperature. So this one resists change quite a bit. That's why I see it doesn't go down very much. This one over here, though, at 25, it really is easy to move it. See, it doesn't take much energy to change its temperature. So a little bit of energy makes this temperature change a lot. So that sort of explains, at least a little bit uh, qualitatively, how you can at least guess that it should be somewhere closer to the 95. And see, it's 86. That's the answer.